Hello, everybody. Uh, Anime Reflux, that's the show. I thought it, I was going to say zero to interest for a second there. Because, <laughs> funny thing, <laughs> you know what usually happens on zero interest or related shows is Casey tends to get a little ranty from time to time. Yep. So, the anime for this week is Infinite Stratos. Um... I'm going to open this review retrospective thing uh, with a bit of a disclaimer. This anime pushes a couple of my um, buttons. Uh, If there is one part of Japanese or animated comedy that has really never sat well with me, it is... Men getting hit by women. Yeah. And you're going to bring that up. Being entirely unable, whether through societal or personal or whatever ideals, just having to fucking take it. I am not a fan of this. So. There there have been some, some animes and other things in recent times that avoid that. Like. Kono Soup is a good example of I will drop kick you without hesitation. Mm-hmm. But uh Yeah, no. This is a, a 2011 anime or 2013 was the second season. Yeah. No, no, 2011 was the first one it went on. Uh and back then was I feel like it was the height of bad harem anime for a while. So Take it with whatever amount of salt is required when you understand that I hate this trope with a passion. So and you, and you, it's, it's completely fair. I hope this gives the relevant context when I say I hated this show. Yep, I knew it. So I'm just going to leave that at the beginning. And I'm going to let somebody else do the the review retrospective thing because I will get shirty if I do it. So, okay, so uh, I'll go ahead and take it. Uh, so we start off with a cold open that's just people in mech suits flying around doing. I honestly was unable to tell at first if it was some kind of training exercise or actually fighting against an enemy, but it seemed to be the latter. Just a group of characters show up, and they're fighting, and struggling, mm. and... Some of them look a little bit distinct, but a couple of them are just white, and they're on opposite sides, so it's just a white mech versus a, another white mech. It's a little difficult to tell which is you're supposed to be rooting for, but yeah. And then from the sky comes protagonist who is he says you're not getting away this time or something like that Hmm. and then cut to the opening which is generic (laughs) I mean it's not bad the only part that really really stood out to me though was where one of the characters looked like they had the millennium eye hmm did not spot that, but didn't watch the year, so that's understandable. Basically a golden eye in place of the left eye. Mm. Okay. Then I think we go to classroom immediately or something. Now we cut to the tram that's going through Futuristic City into the classroom. Uh And then we have protagonist, the only male in a class full of uh, females, saying this is harder than I expected it to be. And while the teacher comes up and gives the generic introduction, uh, protagonist looks to someone who he was apparently childhood friends with for six years, and she looks away. Yeah. And to to give this a basic 
rundown. Uh, he's the only person, like, our main character is the only male, the only one, ever, who can pilot one of these mechs. Because otherwise, it's all females. And no one knows why. And from anything we can see in this episode, no one ever really seemed to have bothered trying to find out. And so instead of, you know, studying him or putting him in some place where he seems like a national treasure of some kind, because if you can find out how it works for him, you could essentially double your workforce. Uh, they, they enroll him in a school, an all-girls school, uh, because we want some... Uh, some harem antics, you know, and yeah. so. Well, I mean, to be fair, even if, even despite the suit's uh, military potential, which I'm sure is going to be coming into play given what we see later, it is explained in a short while that they were initially developed for space travel, and that didn't pan out. So, they ultimately repurposed it for the very mundane but admittedly epic purpose of uh sports yeah and i would like to just mention a very specific word you used there which they also use in the show is designed so this isn't just a weird thing that just came out of nowhere this was a thing that someone built and designed and Somehow that ended up with only half of the population being able to use it for unknown reasons, even though it was designed and built. And then those Maybe. people who designed and built it are still alive. Again, no one bothered trying to figure out how a dude manages to pilot these things. Okay, so for the former, maybe the designers were just females who were not wanting the stereotype of females being weaker than males to persist. They were just major which, feminists. Which makes this a horrifyingly misandristic show. It's a hard word to say. Which also is not a thing I'm a fan of. <laughs> but that's, you know, being a dude, that probably comes with the territory. I, I think it's. I think it's. I don't think they put that much thought into it because I think it's just an excuse to have a male at an all-girls school. Yeah, this is completely. The anime stuff is completely secondary, or maybe third on the list of what this is for. This is originally a game, a strictly harem game, no matter what it looked like in the theme uh, sale. In the, yeah, I'm going to point a, out that there is a light novel. I did a very, very brief wiki walk for a completely unrelated point. Um, and it's actually mentioned at some point in the show or game, I don't know, or care, that it's brought up that if there was a war between the sexes, it would be laughable and over in like three days. To sit in yeah. the show. Like it's it's also, it, it was not yeah. a game, but a, a light novel series, uh, because of course it was. Hmm. Um, I remember back in the day, I watched the first couple episodes of this, but for a lot of reasons didn't really catch my interest. You know, but I always give things the benefit of the doubt and watch a few more episodes, but uh Yeah, this show is I'm I'm just saying misandry is not a theme that is ignored in the concept, even if it is supposed to be horror romantics. Yeah. Yeah, I'll concede that much. Getting back on track, though, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. We had uh, him, we had a childhood friend looking away, and then the teacher tells him to get up and introduce himself to the class. And this is where I honestly started to like the protagonist, because at this point he seemed a little butt monkey-ish, like doormat ish character and this is where he shows that no he's actually got a decent amount of backbone so makes makes him more of a solid character for me in my eyes nervous about his situation but he's not spineless so that said though this uh he doesn't really 
do a good job of showing that at this moment. He um, stands up, introduces himself, everyone's eyes are on him, and he thinks he needs to say something else or else he's going to look emo. And so he says, that's all. And the entire classroom face faults. I like group face faults, so <laughs> I suppose I enjoyed that scene a little more than I should have. But it was meant to be funny, I'm sure. Yeah. And then I believe in comes this really decorated person who has who was an extremely good pilot, then she retired and disappeared, and apparently she's been teaching all of that time. Yeah, she's all. the main character's sister, too. Mm-hmm. And pretty much as soon as she comes in, she starts uh, whacking her little brother. Well, and I, I mean... a polite word for punching him in the top of the head, but yes. But it's family, so it's fine. And in a public setting, where she is in a position of authority over him. Clearly, this is fine. Yeah, and she she even tells him, basically, to only call her by the teacher's name. And I mean, on one hand... On one hand, that's... Oh, she hits him for that, too. Sorry. She hits him twice. Once for the shitty introduction, and then once for calling her whatever her name is, Ni. Yeah, sister. once for calling calling her sister. It's a like, On one hand, it's not... It's not unreasonable to ask something like that in an official setting, like a classroom. But on the other hand, hitting him, no, that's... It's... It's, it's supposed to be funny. It's kind of the Japanese equivalent of slapstick. I... It doesn't, it doesn't really seem all that amusing to me. Yeah, it doesn't it, it, resonate with me at all. It doesn't work at all, especially when you consider the fact that this is his first day as the only male in an all-girls school, and the first thing that happens is that he gets hit by his sister. Hmm. So, mm. Yeah. Also, this class has two homeroom teachers for some reason. Don't worry about it. Okay. <laughs> We, we, we wanted one homeroom teacher, but then we also wanted another flavor of homeroom teacher. So we got you two homeroom teachers. It's a hair manga series. All right, so what happens next? Uh, people want to talk to him, but decide not to because they're shy. All of them are shy, apparently. Everybody wants to talk to the special kids, so they stalk him. Yeah. Like, no one in this entire class is assertive in the slightest, except the person that already knew him. Was what happened next, it was their explanation about the infinite stratos and how their school is the place that teaches people how to use them, and oh, yeah. they're, they're yeah, going yeah. to teach them in three years' time how to master it. Uh, that happens. Yeah, the sister character wants them to understand everything about it in six months so that they can do basic piloting maneuvers and be decent on the machine in about a year total. And yet there was also apparently some sort of practical exam beforehand mm -hmm. where... They had to get in the suits and fight against a drill instructor. Mm. That came up a little bit later, I think, but yes. It did, it, it, yeah. Just bring it up now because context, it's... Mm. Yeah, they were also assigned some reading material, which was, quote, a big, thick book. Uh, and what's his name? I have no idea what his name was. It's completely gone. Um no Sorry? Neither do I. Oh, okay. That's... I think it was Okamura something. Let me double check. Yeah. Oh, it was uh, Orimura. 
Yeah, Okamura was the food company, Persona 5. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> See, I remember I remember that, that because that was <laughs> vaguely interesting. I'm like, anyway. Yeah, so they're supposed to have this big book, and they're supposed to have read it, uh, and he didn't because he lost it, which does not speak well of the character. Yeah, he said he accidentally threw it away. Oh yeah, that was the phrasing. That's why it kind of pissed me off. Yeah. yeah. Even you have to admit that the dope slap his sister gave him for that was justified. Kind of, yeah. It happens in every 30 seconds, but that one was justified, yes. Um, so we'll get you another one, read it in a week, and he's like, well, that's ridiculous. Anyway, class happens and ends. And then protagonist and childhood friend are out in the courtyard and, well, no, the... The roof. Yeah. And the childhood friend had invited him out to talk and apparently she doesn't hate him and it becomes rather clear that she likes him and can't admit it. And it turns out that they were... They knew each other because they took Kendo together for four years. Hmm. So it turns out that they were an archetype. Okay, good to know. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> she invites him to the roof and then says basically nothing for the entire scene. So Just a was... bit of small talk and catching up, it seems. Mm. And yeah. she is apparently weirded out that he pays attention to things and reads newspapers. It's just... It comes across to me as her being really really nervous about yeah. him, the whole crush thing yeah. mm. and then there are again girls watching him from the stairs and they leave him alone basically yeah because again so, no one is assertive and then I think that's the point where we cut to the classroom where a blonde English girl comes up to him. Oh dear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, How blonde... much of a fan do you think I was of this character in particular? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, blonde English girl comes up to him and she has this pompous sort of attitude she uh, is an ojo sama and to, those I, don't she, exist in britain i i just want to say that uh a lot of times I, i've seen a lot of magic academy type animes or whatever over the years mecha anime academy any sort of academy style setting where guy goes into setting where there's some sort of supernatural type or scientific advancement or whatever and he's got the hair romantics going on and almost always almost always it starts off with a fight between the main character and the arrogant girl whoever that arrogant girl may be and so here's our okay, arrogant well, girl. you're skipping ahead quite a bit but yes. yes i know i know but like when I saw this, that's immediately what I thought of. They're, oh, they're going to fight them. Yeah. So, back to what I was saying. This character archetype, the Ojo-sama thing, doesn't exist in Britain. Critical research failure. If they're beneath you, then they're beneath you and you don't really give them notice, is what happens. If you're in high society and they're far below you, you just don't care. Mm -hmm. So, the aggressiveness doesn't fit in the slightest. Okay. Just wanted to point that out. As you are definitely justified in doing. So basically she approaches main character and is pompous, as I said. You don't recognize me. You don't know who I am. And so she introduces herself and... I forget the details of their conversation, honestly, up until the point where she was gloating about being the only student who managed to defeat the drill instructor. Mm. 
Yeah, that's pretty much yeah. the gist of it. Is um, she says she's the representative from Britain, and they mentioned earlier that this is a very multinational school because it's the only one dedicated to the IS system. Which I want to mention, I did actually check. They actually, I was expecting. I looked up the cast list of characters on the wiki. That was what my what my wiki walk was for, and. Yeah, I was expecting a list of Japanese names and a couple of ones that were almost not Japanese. Turns out, no, they actually totally did make a multinational cast. Good for them. They probably got all of them wrong, but still, worth the effort. (sighs) And then... Okay, I do have to comment on that. That's really dedicated for an anime that doesn't really seem to be even mainstream that they put that much effort into it but yeah. hey hang on a sec so you know small polite <coughs> round of applause for putting a little bit of effort yeah, yeah your hair gets all sorts of cultural flavors and that just ruined everything <laughs> Moving on. Mm. Main character speaks up and says that he also managed to defeat the drill instructor and she thinks that she's incredulous about it and he thinks that maybe she was just the only girl to manage it. And apparently his fight with them basically went, drill instructor charges towards him, he sidesteps, she slams into a wall. Yeah, that's... (laughs) Doesn't exactly speak well of either of their skills, but yeah. I will admit that was funny. <laughs> to me, at least. Mm. So yeah, they're um, at odds, basically. She's envious and... Mm. And after that, we cut to end of the day and it's a boarding school of course so his room is on campus and so he get he gets booked coincidentally with his childhood friend Mm. and they're nervous for a little while because of course they are because because she's in a towel is the answer you're looking for yeah basically And she gets mad at him for staring, even though they maintain eye contact throughout the entire scene. I do want to comment that this is a formula that still is around today. This first episode formula for this type of show. Uh, There have been some versions of it, obviously, but yeah, there's nothing in here that... I was so happy to see DXD and they do this exact scene only... The girl does not give a fuck. <laughs> it was so refreshing. It was great. Dee Dee. Yep. X. <laughs> anyway, uh, where was it? Oh, yes. She chases after him with a. There's a term for it, and I can't remember what it is. A wooden sword. Bokum. Bokuto. That's it. Welcome. Chases after him with that, and he gets back out in the hall and slams the door, and she starts stabbing through the door because obviously she's allowed to do that. Mm hmm. And lots of. Oh, I think uh, that was triggered by him dodge rolling out of the way, picking up another one of the. Bokuto that were there, and it happened to have her bra on the end of it. And he nonchalantly deadpans that she's now wearing brassiers. Hmm. And I think that that might have been a decent cause of provocation, hmm. if nothing else. Stabbing through the door is probably a little much, but you know... Yeah, <laughs> just a little much. Just a little. So girls crowd around and take note that that's where the only boy on campus is staying and he begs to be let back into his room and childhood friend consents and he closes the door behind him which 
how that's supposed to give them any privacy when there are now holes in the door, I have no idea. Mm. And yet the girls don't seem to be taking advantage of the holes. Well, no, because they can literally just open the door. They didn't lock it. Yeah, there is that. So basically they... Protagonist and uh, childhood friend talk some more about how things were when they met and um, scheduling things. Yeah, they need to set some ground rules and she outlines the entire schedule for the use of the bathroom and they discuss, well, I really want to use the shower here even rather than the one at the gym because I feel more comfortable there. And he's like, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I don't want to use the toilets at the school either. So like, it's a, and apparent- it's a weirdly detailed conversation. <laughs> And it shows that he does have a background. He does. It shows again that backbone that I mentioned earlier. He's not whining about her taking advantage of the schedule. He's just calmly outlining his own preferences and priorities. Hmm. So, I would personally, I probably would have gone with okay, setting some ground rules. First rule: no more trying to hit me with wooden swords. That's kind of not cool. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah. <laughs> But Casey, where else would they get their slapstick comedy from? Any of the other girls in the entire series. Or that... Uh, never mind. I'm being an asshole. Yeah, so am I. <sighs> okay, so, basically, so back to where we were before. Uh, they basically talk about those sorts of things, and she took the bed that he wanted, and... the. Uh, not a lot of detail goes into exactly what happens next. The three, gl- the three girls were there again that were watching them and have just continuously been doing that. Don't you know your, car- your character is cooler if they have stalkers. Right? <sighs> and cut to the next day where they're back in the classroom and... What was it? Not what was quite. it they said? It's not quite to the classroom yet. It's to the cafeteria. Oh yeah. Cause eating and he has a lot and uh the girls don't because and that's about all the explanation we get. Um and one of them is in like animal pajamas or something. Yes. That was odd. Hmm. She's the quirky one, I bet. <laughs> so, <laughs> then we get to the classroom. Sorry. Yeah, there was some more interaction between main character and childhood friend in that scene. Not really anything notable. The girls find out that they were childhood friends, and doesn't really go anywhere. Yeah, it's a lot of these scenes. <clears throat> but yeah, classroom... Uh, and they're picking out uh, who's going to be the representative. And, of course, one girl goes, hey, let's make What's-His-Name do it. And another girl's like, it's seconded. I say we let What's-His-Name do it. And and the sister says that if there are no other uh, recommendations, he is automatically going to get it. He doesn't want it. And he stands up and says so. And but then... does not bother to nominate anyone else. I feel like that was his out. Is like, hey, I nominate someone else. No, okay. Okay, fair. That that's fair. Then a English girl stands up, and what was it that she said? Uh, misandry. Like, I'm not kidding. She's like, I don't want. We shouldn't be represented by a boy. How disgusting! Something like that. So, yeah. I'll concede a bit of fairness in that one boy representing that many that large of a group of just girls might be a little questionable but it is mostly misandry and uh, somehow a fight challenge happens and I'm not actually sure how it happened yeah, I think I think he might have insulted England or something. I 
I think he did that at some point. Oh yeah, he said it was a crappy country or something. I don't know. That, that was like, no, she called Japan an underdeveloped country, and he says, "Hey, Britain's nothing to rave about, lady." And, that's... <laughs> and yeah, she challenges him to a duel, and he calmly accepts, saying that it would be a better way to settle things. <laughs> And basically, he they discuss handicaps, and he offers to give her one. So at first, I'm thinking, this guy's really confident in his skills. Then, no, it turns out it was just misogyny. Yeah, goes both ways. Not going not gonna to pretend otherwise. Um, and then the entire class laughs because, ha, a guy thinking that he can beat a woman essentially essentially so then we have him isn't that weird for him to to kind of laugh at that when he's the first guy to really be able to pilot one of these things they don't know what exactly he's capable of maybe it's just an ingrained thought that the old idea of girls being weaker than boys is, is something of an archaic one at this point. I mean, these machines have not existed that long. Like, what's his name's sister is friends with the creator of these machines. Hmm. I don't know. So, all right. Anyway, we basically she smugly uh, English girl smugly offers him a handicap instead and he says no I'm a man of my word I won't take one and so they basically decide to fight uh, one on one and the teacher sister character I believe uh, calmly and with something of a pleased smile it looks like says that the fight will take place on Monday in given room somewhere mm. and the protagonist smiles in a content uh, somewhat eager sort of way maybe mm. and cuts yeah that's the end of the episode so i promise to keep my trap shut we have very well established what i think of this show at this point so ken you haven't been talking much what do you think about the show I mean, what's that much? I mean, like, dude, I get it, but it's the point where I see this shit so much, I'm numb to it. Yeah, it's a trope that's overdone to the extent where I barely notice it anymore. Like when I first saw, like the, oh wait, he's doormat. Oh, okay, that's what's happening. Now, granted. Had I not been watching that for this show, probably would have stopped watching after the bed, after the dorm room thing. But eh, I didn't go into this expecting anything except generic stuff. I didn't get anything that changed my mind on that. So, eh. Yeah, over the years, uh, my opinion of this show has <laughs> gone down quite a lot to where I was like, eh, it's passable to being like, eh, it's not something I'm interested really in at all. It's something I've, I've now seen done a lot and done better. So it, I don't know. I, I see no reason to really watch all of this show unless somehow the weird power suit type mecha designs interest you. Yeah, I don't see the whole mech thing being interesting enough to keep me. And yeah. they don't even show any in the first. And I hate the first minute or two. Yeah. And I hate to put it this way, but it ain't fan service enough to keep other people either. So, uh... so basically, other anime do the mecha thing better. Other anime do the harem thing better. Other anime do the fan service better. And I mean, Far I memory. don't. I don't dislike what I've seen thus far, but it's not interesting enough yeah. to... I, yeah. I like 
I like the protagonist's character. It seems like a solid character, but that's really the best that I can say. If I remember correctly, I think it does end up going a lot farther with the fan service. <sighs> yeah. Well, that just uh, omitted my remaining interest. As I say, my opinion is very clearly documented in this episode so far. It offends me on a personal level. And I don't really care how good the mecha stuff might have been, or how good the horror antics might have been, or how good the fan service might have been. I would not have watched a single second more after after his sister hit him. I would have just stopped and been like, nope. This all being said, watch the Abridge series by Runaway Tourist. It's actually really funny. <sighs> A bridge series. Uh, well, yeah, Infinite Mint. Ah, uh, Slicer told us to watch that, and I forgot to do that. Dang. Well, Slicer's not here, so he can't offer opinion on it either because he's got a broken mic audience. Mm. Uh, I watched it, the Infinite Mint series, a year or two ago, but years back. It's been a long time, but I remember I had a lot of fun watching it. It's a it's a much earlier bridge show than a lot of the more recent bridge series, but it's still mm. very funny. So kind of Yu Gi Oh bridge kind of era. Past that, but not it's not like say SA or bridged. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So there was less expected quality for those sort of things at the time. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's leave this behind us. And... Oh, please. <laughs> All right, Kenshi. All right, let's find the next new anime that Casey's going to bitch about next week. Come on. Oh, joy. Hmm. 27. All right, here we go. What was last week's first number? Does anyone remember? Uh... Well, if it was I, then it was a nine. Yeah, we just watched. It. Really? Because it's nine again. <laughs> really? <laughs> All right. Let's 34. get into the Stratus again. Okay. So we have to watch episode two. <laughs> if you if you roll low, we can get an idol show. Uh, let's not do that. Come on, <laughs> random number generator. Initial thirty-two. D. Thirty-two. Thirty-two. Oh damn it! Okay. Hmm. Oh gosh, is it not? Is it an isekai thing? Because there's lots of isekai things in here. I don't know what that is, no. but you don't sound happy. It's about way it further all. down the. Okay, then we might get initial D. Nope. I don't know. What do we get? The winner is Itoshi no Muko. Translation: Lovely Muko. Damn it. M U C O. Is it doggy? Is it doggy? Hold on. Let me make sure these are full length. It's a good okay. point. Yeah, that is a good point. One sec. It's loading. Holy shit, the seventh compiled volume of Takayuki <laughs> manga is announcing on Thursday that a television anime adaptation has been greenlit for this fall. The manga depicts the life of the pet dog Muko and his owner Komatsu, who lives in his glass making workshop in the mountains. Homeboy, I uh, said, wait. <laughs> it's, it's, 12, 12, it's 12 and a half minutes long. It's a, it's a half, half the time limit. I don't know mm. if, that's, if you want to go with that. This strikes me as something that would be like a Japanese equivalent of a Peanuts comic strip, something like that. It, it seems like a, a dog-based four coma. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it doesn't look bad, but eh, I'm not particularly inclined to watch it. But I'm not going to waste my veto on it. Again, it's it's twelve and a half minutes for the episode, so I don't know. Dealer's choice. Uh, well, here's the thing. We do still have the group thing that we could do. We have four people. I mean, this doesn't seem offensive to me. It just seems like it's going to bore me to death. Mm. Although, that is reason enough for me to offer my Kenshi veto. Not my singular veto, but offering up the chance for a group veto. Zero. Group vote Kenshi. Um... If 
uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not really interested in this in particular. So I could do a group veto if you guys don't feel like watching this. Casey. I, I'm the one that brought it up, so. <laughs> Very well, then. Take it from the top, Kenshi. All right, Alrighty. let's hold that number again. Let's get another one that'll piss off Casey. Come on, what are 27? Let's do this shit, audience. This time, 15. 15, that's O. O. Yeah, pity we can't choose one piece. <laughs> we can't? News to me. You said we couldn't do stuff like that. We tried before. We can't do yeah, stuff yeah. that we've already reviewed, like fucking Naruto and shit, but... You did have me mark out some of the ones that you'd watched before. Remember, I mean, I can, un I can unmark out one piece if you want me to. Oh, it was marked out already? I guess we yeah, okay, might have done the. Uh, I think it's because One Piece, we did the manga reviews or something at one point. Very, very briefly, we did, yes. One yeah. Punch Man. One Punch Man. One, one Punch Man. man. One 49. Punch Anything I want to on this. One Punch Man. One Punch Man. One that, one no. punch, man. Come it's on, baby. Way. There's gotta be. Come on, Zero. You gotta have more hope than that. Come 49, on, come on. One punch, man. Okay. All right, here we go. 20. Ah. Bad luck, Kenshi. One punch, man is number 12. Ah! <laughs> this wasn't even that far. That's the second time that I've had to... Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, oh, no. Okay. What did we get? What did we get? Oh, I know right after that is Onichi and something, right? On Senor Se Hakone Chan. Translation Young Hot Spring Fairy Hakone Chan. Oh god. After many years of dormant rest, a hot springs fairy awakens in modern day Japan. However, while she slept, <gasps> she took on the appearance of a young girl. She uh. decides to cooperate with the locals while trying to regain her powers. Uh. Genres of comedy and signing. Sainan. Uh, Sainan? Sainan? Really? That's a, an adult Yeah, that's tag. Yeah, young adult is what that is. Like, 18, 19. Hmm. With a, with a small girl on the cover. Or I don't know how I feel about that. You know how everyone else does. Checking the comments. One chan sent me There's here, no and I'm now comment. fulfilling res responsibilities. That doesn't tell me much. All right, hang on. I'm going to pull up the episode. He, he needs more information. The episodes are only three and a half minutes. Okay, it's good. Oh, thank okay. God. Okay. It's already okay. Someone <laughs> got saved today. All right. All right. Uh, Casey, is it from the top or from O? It's from O. Oh, from O? Okay. Yep. okay. From the top One is for punch, man. This was One punch, man. One, One punch, punch, man. man. One punch, man. One punch, man. Damn it. <laughs> it's 48. 48. Oh. Right at the bottom. Oh, quite Right near the bottom, yes. Oh, uh, Oz Mafia with two exclamation marks after it. Uh, uh, the anime will feature an original story from the game on which it is based. Thanks for that uh, summary. <laughs> let, really? me, let, me, let me check my anime list. For, Alrighty. Uh, it's Shoujo, by the way. And Harm. Ah. Uh, <laughs> 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 okay, let me see how long this is. Yeah, that's the final check. Oh god, this is a reverse harem show, isn't it? It's four minutes. It's four minutes. It's okay. Four minutes. Come it's on. Four minutes. It's All four right. minutes. All okay. right. At least we're blocking these out, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, hang on a moment. One of these days, we're not gonna get lucky with one of these. <laughs> Forty-nine, uh, I guess, Ken. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Let me know when you're really good to go, patient. It's like a shoujo harem with a, with a chibi art style. That's that's kind of weird. Um, I'll be ready momentarily, just rearranging the list so as to uh, correspond with the two anime that I've just deleted from it. Keep the dream alive. So it's going to be 47 this time. Keep the uh, dream yeah. alive. Keep the dream alive, Zero. We're going to get one punch man. <laughs> one punch man. I feel it. Today's the day you finally watch this, Casey. Well, not today, Could but be. next week. But That or one of 46 other things, but sure. Uh, technically, we have one, two, three, four off of it already. So it's technically 
it's technically 43, but it's a little, a little too much trouble to just skip over the ones yeah. that they've already done. So If it comes up, just roll again, kind of thing. Yeah. Oh, man. I feel it. Can you feel it? I can I feel, feel it. it. I don't All feel right, it. here we go. RNG. And we get, damn it. <laughs> 15. <laughs> <laughs> it's only a couple off. Uh, oh. Oneg guy twins. No! That doesn't sound good. That's <laughs> please twins if anyone wants the translation. Uh, Maiku Kamishiro has a problem. Actually, make that two problems. He has two young girls uh, boarding at his house, each claiming that they're his long lost twin sister. Oh dear. Uh, which one is his twin sister, and which one is a total stranger? Um. So, it's another harem one. I'm checking the episode. Not really, no. Well, it's marked uh, as it's, one. It's, is it? It's tagged with harem. And... It's not for the dub, so I don't know. But the dub is not the first episode. Alright, uh... I'm okay, never mind. The uh, yeah, the subversions cover image is um a lot different to the one for the dub. Yeah, yeah. you see, there's a reason why I was like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. I'm checking the length of the episode and if it will load. Uh, no, it's 25 minutes per episode. I checked on my anime list. Drat. All right. So, uh, AC. Yes. This is like playing the. This is like playing chicken, but with incest. You don't know if one's your sister or one's not. Okay, so that's just awful. I'm willing to. I'm willing to put up my group veto one more time. To, but... <laughs> no, I'm good. I can't veto. I can't group veto twice in one episode. Uh, if that if that other thing that we just uh, got rid of was. Full length, I would have suffered through it because <laughs> we already outvoted something once. All right, uh, so, Casey. Uh, yeah. <sighs> Unless you want to use your veto, on a guy twins. Think. All right, on a guy twins. It is then. All right. I've never heard of this before, which Nor might be I. for good reason. How the hell is this sci-fi? <laughs> I don't know. I guess don't you know the twins are probably aliens? Well, we'll find out, won't we? I guess. This has been a crapshoot of a day. <laughs> uh, also, probably not worth watching the dub for this one. They tend to actually have kind of shitty dubs for fan service series, which I know for reasons that we will not get into. Right. So thanks for listening, everybody. We'll be back next week with Onigai Twins, and hopefully Casey will not be as furious at that one as he was at the one that we had to do this week. You kidding? I hope he is. I, I hope he's more furious. He won't be, but... Yeah. We'll see. <laughs>